intermittent fasting is another very important concept when it comes to our health. Now, intermittent fasting doesn't change what you eat. It changes when you eat. It's more of the timing of how you eat. The importance of fasting has been shown in numerous animal studies from single cellular organisms all the way up to monkeys and primates. It's thought to apply to humans as well. The proof isn't exactly there yet, but it certainly is suggestive. The concept is by reducing our calorie intake, we can actually improve our longevity. It can help our genes in what's called our telomeres. It can help our glucose and insulin regulation in our body. All of these individual concepts that have been shown to be related to longevity. Now the problem is nobody wants to walk around severely restricting their calories all the time. It's a difficult way to live, especially in today's society. So one concept that is broken off from the calorie restriction is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting can also come in lots of shapes and sizes. Eat normally for five days, fast for two days. Fast every other day, eat normally on the other days. The way that I find works the best is simply skipping breakfast. So here's an example. You finish eating at 7 p.m. one night. You don't eat the next day until noon or one o'clock. So let's get into the specifics of that. 10 hours after we eat, our body goes into what's called a fasting state. That's when our insulin level is low enough that our body's gonna turn to our own fat stores for energy. It's gonna break down our fat stores into what's called ketone bodies, and that's where we're gonna get our energy. We're not relying on glucose anymore. We're not relying on food intake anymore. Instead, we're burning our own fat stores. So one, that helps us reduce our fat mass. And if we're exercising, we can at the same time increase our lean body mass, and that's a marker of health. Two, having that period where we're into lipolysis and burning our own fat, we're improving our glucose and insulin sensitivity, which is a very important concept for health. Three, we're naturally increasing our human growth hormone, which is also beneficial for energy and is beneficial for health. And then we get added benefits as well. One of the main added benefits is psychologically. We learn that we are in control of our hunger. Our hunger doesn't control us. When we're in this concept of eating all the time, eating frequently, every time we feel a pang of hunger, we feel we need to reach and grab something to eat. When we get good at intermittent fasting, we realize that we don't have to do that. We can last hours and we still have energy. We still feel good and we can still feel healthy. And we don't have to reach for that immediate snack. We are in control of our health. We are in control of our hunger and not the other way around. So when you're practicing intermittent fasting, Remember, what you eat still matters, and it's even more important that you're eating high quality, real food, vegetable based with a good percentage of healthy fats. If you are trying intermittent fasting and still eating a high carbohydrate, high sugar diet, you're gonna have a very difficult time because your body's not gonna have the energy it needs for that long run. An important concept about intermittent fasting is sometimes it seems really hard when you first think about it but it's actually pretty easy to implement. It will take some time to get used to. The first few times you try it, you may feel hungry. You may be wanting to reach for that snack, but part of it is your body's learning and getting more adapted to this lipolysis, to burning its own fat for energy. And after the first few times, your body's gonna get better at it and you're gonna feel better at it. But here's another tip. Don't just try it on any random day. You wanna make sure you try it and schedule your fasting days on days when you have complete control of what you eat for your first meal and when you're gonna eat it. The last thing you want is to have been fasting all day and then have no control and just have to grab whatever's available because frequently that's gonna be a low quality, high carbohydrate food and that's exactly what you wanna avoid. So if you have a big business meeting, you're traveling, you don't know where exactly you're gonna be or when you're gonna be able to eat, that's a day to eat your breakfast normally. But on days where you have more control, go ahead and skip that breakfast, delay lunch a little bit, and you'll see the benefits of intermittent fasting. Another bonus, it cuts down on that post-dinner snacking. Set yourself up for success. Here's another way to train yourself that you don't need that post-dinner snacking because you're stopping at seven o'clock because it's part of your intermittent fasting protocol. It's part of what you do. 
Over time you learn, huh, you don't need those late night snacks. You still have plenty of energy. You still have plenty of nourishment. It was excess calories you didn't need. So intermittent fasting gives so many psychological benefits and mindful benefits. It makes you more mindful about what you're eating and what you don't need to eat. Here's an example of how intermittent fasting schedule can work. At 7 p.m., you're done eating. You can drink simple liquids like water, but nothing with any calories enters your system. From 7 p.m. to 5 a.m., you're still in the postprandial zone where your body is still using glucose for energy and you still have slight elevations of your insulin level. But after 5 a.m., once you've passed that 10-hour window, now you've entered the true fasting window where your body turns to lipolysis. That's when it will start to break down your fat stores and convert them to ketones for energy. The longer you're in this window, the more benefit you're going to get. I arbitrarily set the goal to 1 p.m. before you have lunch, but there's nothing magical about 1 p.m. If you can only make it to 10 a.m., that's fine. You still got a good five hours. But if you can push it even further to 3, 4, even 6 or 7 o'clock the next day, then you're getting even more benefit. And you'll notice that the more you practice this, the more experience you get, the more comfortable you'll be in extending that fasting period. You have to find what's comfortable for you and what works for you. And remember, you don't have to do it every single day. Pick your days when you can do it well and get the most benefit. But also remember, this is definitely an all or none effect. You can't have a small snack at 9 or 10 o'clock and still remain in that fasting state. The only thing you can have are simple liquids like water, black coffee or tea, but nothing with any significant calories. Those are the rules. It's pretty simple. So give it a try and let's see the benefit you can get from it.